Hey, how's it going? My name is Roswell Ramirez. I'm a 3D artist and animator. Today I'll be working on Kuriyama from Beyond the Boundary. A good friend of mine recommended this anime to me back in like 2020, and I finally got a chance to sit down and watch it. I fell in love with the animation instantly, so I knew I had to do some fan art for it. Normally I do stylized art, so initially when I was doing my block out, I figured this probably isn't going to work for this project, and it would be a good chance to actually learn the anime style, so I ended up bringing it into Blender instead.
Normally I use substance painter when I'm doing my texturing and I've never actually painted anything in Blender before. So this was a good chance to actually sit down and, and learn how that process works. But I found out that Blender doesn't have traditional layer support, as far as I know anyway. So I went on a little study session and found Yuku Pomar's plugin, Yuku Paint. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong but it's such a lifesaver because not only did I have layers to work with, but I could bake the textures down and then bring it into another program to paint on. If you haven't used the plugin before, I'll make sure to put a link in the description for it, so watch out for that. For the armature, I'm just using a simple rigify and then extruding a couple of chain bones out from the waist, chest, and head so that I have different bones to deform the hair and different clothing bits with. For as long as I've been using Blender now, I actually haven't set up any IKs manually before, so that was quite the process, and I did a couple of tests. Um, this one, for example, yeah, I know, it's great. Anyway, let's get back to work. For the most part, Blender does a pretty good job at auto-weighting bones to the mesh, but for more complicated meshes like this, you'd probably have to do a lot more manual work, which I did so that I can get some smooth deformations in the clothes. Something I found out during this process, which is also a big time saver, is if you lock certain vertex groups, just the ones that you're going to use, then go to the drop down menu and hit delete all unlocked, it'll get rid of those and then you can just unlock the ones that you're going to use. That way, for sanity, you're just working with what you need. Alright, now that all that's done, three months of your life are gone, but I think this is my favorite part of the process because you really get to put some personality into the character and bring them to life. It's not just a static T-pose anymore, now you've got some action going on. Well, if you stuck around to this point of the video, I really appreciate it. You could have been watching any artist today, but you chose me. I got a lot of projects lined up this year, and I hope to really improve on my editing skills as far as YouTube goes. I don't do a whole lot of these long-form videos, but I think that's going to change soon. I also want to give a shout-out to the artist at BlenderArtist.org. I post there pretty frequently, and there's always someone giving me tips or tricks to improve. Really appreciate it, guys. Anyway, until next time, see ya.